I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe and recommend the channel if you like, if you want to support the channel a bit more. Well, I don't know. You should support the channel, otherwise I'm going to punish you. I'm going to punish you, bad, bad boy. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. This is meant to be serious, okay? You should take this right here serious because it's absolutely fucking beautiful. I shit you not, my boys and girls. Actually, I found this question on Quora. So this video has been brought to you by Quora. Don't forget to click on my questions to support the channel passively a little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it looks like it doesn't make any sense, but it does make perfect sense, actually. So. <laughs> What you could also do, you could put brackets right here to um, imply that this integral goes over this whole integrand. And yeah, it looks absolutely weird. At first sight, it really doesn't make any sense because what's the integral of x raised to the dx power? But if we take a look at the Riemann sum definition of the integral and also some other stuff, it's going to make perfect sense. And this thing right here is actually known as the product integral. It's quite cool. We are going to explore this today a little bit. Using a heuristic approach, I would say not really a rigorous approach. I just want to motivate what we are going to derive today. At first, I want you guys to consider the Riemann sum. Okay, so if we have an integral from A to B of some function f of x integrate with respect to x, well, what is that exactly? Take a look at my Christmas special, Math Vengers. Um, <laughs> integral war. I've actually talked about the representation of an integral with respect to the Riemann sum in this video. Well, what we do, basically, we are going to sum up infinitely many little, little rectangles, okay? So this is nothing but the limit as n approaches infinity of a sum running from i equals to 1 to n of, okay, like I said, Many, 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 many rectangles. So if we have a certain curve right here, for example, this one, we are going to take a rectangle right here, and then we have a rectangle right here. Okay, and what we have? We have equal length partitions down here, our delta x. This is our interval a to b, for example. And well, how can we construct delta x? Well, this is nothing but b minus a over n. Okay, so we are going to have n many, in the end, infinitely many, really small sized um, delta x's down here that we are going to multiply with the height of those rectangles. The height is nothing but, well, our function evaluated at a certain point xi. Okay, but what is xi? Well, this for example is x1 right here, okay? This is x2. Since they have the equal distance down here, those partitions, we can express our xi by nothing but i times delta x. This is what we have, okay? Meaning, if you plug this chunk into here, summing up infinitely many small rectangles, how can you get the area of the rectangle? Well, f of xi times delta x, okay? This is what we actually get. This right here is the Riemann sum definition, one of those are many because we have upper sums and lower sums and stuff like this. Never mind, it really doesn't quite matter right now. And I want you guys to consider something. So if we plug our delta x into here, and like I said, it's more of a heuristic approach, not a rigorous approach. If we let n approach infinity on our delta x, well, in the limit, our delta x is going to go to dx, okay? Delta x in the limit goes to dx for n to infinity. But what it also kind of does is turn this dx into an infinitesimally small portion, okay, on this x-axis right here. Meaning it kind of, not really, but goes to zero. So yeah, it, it's a matter of evaluating this limit where um, we have n approach infinity on different parts right here, okay. But like I said, it's more of a heuristic approach. Our dx kind of goes to zero in the limit, okay? Not really, but it's going to be really, really small. It's nearly going to approach zero in the limit. 
Okay, and this is going to help us now because what I would like to do, I would like to treat this like a regular integral, meaning all that we're missing right here is a dx for us to integrate this. But we can just multiply it by dx, so this wouldn't work. What we do instead, we are going to multiply it by dx over dx. Okay, this is a 1, even if you take the limit, as dx approaches 0, it doesn't quite matter, you can do algebraic manipulation, and it's still just a 1. So that works out nicely. Meaning, we are going to bring this into a different order, that's the integral of x to the dx power minus 1 over dx, and then integrate it with respect to x. It doesn't really look any better right now, but now I would like to motivate something else. I would like to take a look at the derivative ddx of a to the x power. <laughs> doesn't look like it um, does make any sense right now, but bear with me. We know on the one hand this is nothing but the derivative with respect to x of e to the natural log a to the x power. By the natural log property we can bring the x to the front. And now we can easily differentiate that, leaving us with, okay, our exponential function stuff stays as it is, but this expression is nothing but a to the x, so this is going to be preserved. Now we need to use the chain, lu, the chain rule and take the inner derivative, which is nothing but natural log of a. But we also have a different definition for our differential, a more rigorous definition, namely as the difference quotient. Okay, so this is nothing but the limit as some delta x, for example, I'm going to put it like this, just because notation-wise right here, approaches zero of. Okay, this is nothing but. We have this difference quotient, so over delta x, and now we have f of x plus delta x, but our f of x is nothing but a to the x, so a to the x plus delta x minus a to the x power. We have this cool property of exponentiation that we can break this summation up, this little functional equation, into a multiplication of those factors. Meaning we can factor out a to the x, so this is a to the x, it's independent of the limit of delta x, so we can bring it to the outside, times the limit as delta x approaches zero of um, a to the delta x power minus one over delta x. And I want you guys to notice something. If we compare coefficients, well, we have a to the x power here and a to the x power here. Meaning this term right here is actually equivalent to our natural log of a. It's the limit definition of natural log. So that's a little matter of fact. That's quite cool. And <laughs> does this ring a bell? So our integrand right here is basically our natural log of a, just without the limit. But that's why I was talking about the heuristic approach of the Riemann sums right here. Our dx that we have right here basically goes to the limit to zero when delta x right here for n approaches infinity. So meaning our dx that we have up here is nothing but our delta x going to zero in the limit kind of, okay? Meaning, this is nothing but the integral of something, it's an indefinite integral, limit as delta x approaches zero of x to the delta x minus one over delta x integrated with respect to x. Okay, I hope you could follow everything I said. It's quite a lot of input, to be honest. Meaning, we know what this is. This is nothing but our natural log of x. So that's the integral of the natural log of x dx, and I actually made a video on that one right here. So you can do integration by parts, let me think. So we are going to have um, a one right here, meaning we are going to get um, x times natural log of x integrated, and then negative x over x is one, okay, negative x. And then plus some arbitrary constant c. And <laughs> actually, this right here is our solution to this integral. So we have turned this, what, whatever the hell this is, into something that we are familiar with. So, so this actually works out. And there's a more rigorous approach to this thing. It's called the product integral, like I mentioned in the beginning. You can even find a Wikipedia article on it, but probably nothing else because that's something that's not um, too well um, researched in mathematics. We are going to define the product integral as this thing right here, product of f of x to the dx power, okay? 
That right here is the product integral notation and it's going to evaluate basically to the exponential function exp of the integral with some up and lower bounds, we don't know, of, well, f of x dx. Okay? If I'm not mistaken. Meaning, what we can basically do, we can take natural log on both sides. Now we have natural log of some infinite product, probably, f of x to the dx power being equal to. The cool thing is about natural log is that we can turn this multiplication on the outside to a summation. So we are going to have the sum of and we can bring the dx to the outside multiplicatively. So we have natural log of f of x dx. And <laughs> this is pretty familiar. Okay, so we know what this basically is. Um, I'm thinking, do we have a natural log of f of x right here? I'm, I'm not too certain if there's going to be a natural log of some sorts here. I'm going to put a little annotation into here. So you see, this thing right here is basically our Riemann sum definition. So this product integral that we have derived here, heuristically, basically just stems from this fact and it does make perfect sense in this context. So you see, um, if we take natural log, then we are just going to have um, this integral right here. Yeah, and this is pretty damn dope. I'm, I'm pretty certain that there's a natural log here. <laughs> I'm pretty certain that a natural log is missing. Just take a look at the uh, Wikipedia article for this thing. Yeah, but I just wanted to present it to you guys because that's pretty fucking cool if you ask me. So yeah, that's something really unusual. Um, it's just cool. It's just cool to look at. It's, it looks damn weird, but it does make perfect sense in the end if you approach it um, yeah, with a little bit of common sense. I think as watching, if you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe and recommend the channel if you like, if you want to support the channel a bit more. Well, I don't know. You should support the channel, otherwise I'm going to punish you. I'm going to punish you, bad, bad boy. And yeah, up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya.